Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. You know how much time I spend at bars? Oh, yeah. I'm there once, twice. I'm surprised you're not, you're not there right now. Yeah, I know. Every 20 yeah. years or so. <laughs> I don't get out much. Uh, but I will tell you this. When you go out for drinks, there are things you should do, things you shouldn't do. Yeah. And our list today is things your bartender won't tell you. And that's next on Men Are So Smart. You know, there's a couple of rules that you should live by when you're going out socializing, perhaps maybe for drinks or drinks and dinner, whatever the case may be. If you encounter a bar, there are certain things, rules you should adhere to. For instance, your bartender won't tell you this, but if you yell, whistle, or wave money, <laughs> the chances are you're going to wait even longer. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to know. Yes. Don't. don't. Make eye contact and smile, and they'll come over just as soon as they possibly can. Know what you want and have your money ready. Don't create a traffic jam. Happens all the time, and it's bad enough that people have to pay with uh, uh, debit cards or credit right. cards. That makes it take even longer. Yep. So have cash and be ready to go, but don't wave it. Don't yell or whistle, nope. and don't say, Oh, barkeep. They don't like that either. woo <laughs> <laughs> Now, this is right along those same lines. So, if you are going to be paying with a credit card, mm -hmm. start a tab. Exactly. Yes. Okay, may I start a tab? Or they'll say, would you like to start a tab? Yes, of course. When they ask you that, they mean, please start a tab. Yeah, because they're, they don't have to spend as much time. Right. So, uh, it says here, this bartender says, if I swipe your card five times this evening... That's five times as much paperwork that will have to be done at 4 a.m. And it is 4 a.m., trust yeah. me. And plus, keeping your tab open means you'll be able to get your drink even quicker. Now, the next one I, I adhere to, I can assure you, you want a drink made strong. If you're going to drink, you might as well have a strong drink. Well, don't expect that the bartender is just going to give you extra liquor. Uh, order a double. Yep. Yeah. To make sure you get the amount of alcohol you really want. And by the way, you know, <laughs> just just get it simple. A double vodka rocks. Simple enough. Yep. Yep. Um, so lots of bars have comp tabs, which allows the bartender to give away some drinks. It's smart business and helps them build a base of regulars, especially at new bars and restaurants. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind too, especially if you're going to go to a someplace that's kind of freshly opened, you know, make friendly with the bartender. Try to, uh, you know, they obviously, they do have some leeway. Uh, I, I think probably a bartender, not so much as if the owner is behind the bar. Uh, but still, hey, make friendly and you might get a free drink or two out of the deal. Or bring a really attractive blonde. That's what I always do. <laughs> Yeah, that always works. <laughs> Bars that don't have regulars, like hotels or uh, airports, have started using wireless gadgets. And what I mean is, it's one that measures how much, exactly how much alcohol is poured and automatically rings up each shot. They're meant to prevent over, over pouring and to cut losses. So uh, you better get used to that. And, and again, Order a double if you think you're gonna get a not get a good enough drink. Yep. Well, and then this one gets to tipping. So I know a lot of people, eh, they get a four dollar beer, they tip a buck. That's what I do. Yeah, seems right. So, which is another great reason to open a tab. It's very easy to calculate your your tip once you see how much your tab is. Tip once. Yeah, tip one time, one and done. Uh, if you're tipping a buck, say on a $12 drink, that's probably not enough. So again, opening up a tab will eliminate that and it'll also be a little bit fairer for the bartender in the amount of tips that they're gonna receive. And these guys, they actually, they live on their tips. They don't, they make no money. My date for dinner orders $12 glasses of wine. Oh, there you go. And my wife gets furious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up. Um, at some bars, the sliced fruit garnishes sit out until they're gone. The bartender won't tell you that. 
sometimes even for days. Yeah. Much accordingly, if you're thinking about having a whole bunch of cherries, <laughs> don't. All right. They don't like when you just sit there and pick cherries out of their uh, garnish bins. Right. Yeah. And it's all that stuff is, oh my God, the thing with the most cooties on it and uh, germs. Yeah, the the peanuts and stuff and everything, all the all the condiments, uh, awful. In fact, they were saying that I don't even do this at restaurants anymore. When I get iced tea, I don't want the lemon in there. Oh no, I don't either. Or or my Corona, I don't put a lime right. in there. Right, because how often do they scrub the outside of that before they put it in your drink? Never. Never. Next up on our things, your bartender won't tell you. Yeah. They have police on speed dial, and they don't hesitate to call a popo. Uh, so if you're going to cause a problem, be aware that the police are going to be there very quickly. All right, next up on our list, don't order a round of drinks after last call. Last call applies to everyone, even you. Okay, and, and you know what else, too? As a guy who used to work in a bar nightclub, um, you're counting the minutes till last call. You really are. Uh, next up, uh, some get a cut from the cab company when they call for a taxi for a tipsy patron. I had no idea of that, Ron. Yeah, that's and that makes sense. And you know what? Uh, I think it's fair. Uh, if a lot, of, if some of these cab companies are going to stay close to the bar, just for the simple fact to you know take drunk drivers home. I think that's uh, that's a good that's a good way to pick up a tip. Yeah, I'm not I'm not against that at all. It's no big deal. Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a good practice. They bartenders see some petty drama on occasion. Last week, a couple had a little too much to drink and got into a dumb argument. Then they asked the bartender to choose the winner of the fight. Yeah, that's that's not a decision you want to do. Uh, there isn't a tip big enough to get the bartender involved in a situation like that. Oh, man. Forget about it. Well, and you know what? If you're already in an argument with your, your significant other, don't go to a bar because arguments only get worse once you both start drinking. Yeah, the alcohol is a factor. Yep. And that's why we always read those stories that end with alcohol was involved. Yes. <laughs> uh, if the bartender decides to cut you off, that's it. Yeah. You don't argue. You're done. Yeah. If anything, you should apologize if you've made a scene. So, um, and you know what? We, <laughs> I, I went to a, a friend's bachelor party, and we went to about, I don't know, like five different bars, and he had a twelve passenger van, and one of his friends uh, is a recovering alcoholic and does not drink, so he was our designated driver. And when we got kicked out of one bar, we went to another. And guess what? They got wouldn't even kicked out? they wouldn't even let us in. Oh. Yeah. So once you get kicked <laughs> once you get kicked out of a bar, you should probably just call it a night. Call it a night. Yeah. You're done. You're, you're done. All right. Well, there you go. There's our list of things your bartender uh, won't tell you. I really I I learned that they get a cut from the taxi ride, huh? I, that's amazing, but yeah. you know what? Like I said, seems uh, seems legit. What about Uber and Lyft? I wonder if they probably do that. not. There's not a lot of profit. In if those. you're an Uber or a Lyft driver, let us know. Yeah, we'd love to know in the comments below. Yeah. Uh, more often than not, here's what I recommend: when you're going out for an evening and you're planning on staying at one particular location, and your bartender is going to be the same pretty much for their whole shift, not going to change. I recommend a couple of things. Number one, be friendly towards the person. Yeah. All right. You know what? Bartending can be known as a career. Some people make a career out of that. Only the really, really good ones last. So what I recommend is this. On the first time that you uh, order a drink from that person, Tell them that you'd like to start a tab if they don't already ask you. And let's say you're ordering uh, $20 worth of drinks, okay? Right. Maybe for three people or something. Um, tip the guy 10 bucks. Yeah. And guess what? The next time you go up there to get drinks, he'll go, another Miller Genuine draft for you? Yeah. 
And not only that, but he's going to wade through the other people. Yeah. And go, what right, do you need? Right, Ronnie. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Tip them big on the first round. They remember your face. Yep. And uh, and then, of course, as Ronnie mentioned, uh, tip them at the end of the night when you're paying off your tab. And do not run out on your tab. That Ooh. is, that yeah, is that's uh, low class. Stay classy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if you have any questions... If you'd like to uh, make a comment, you can do that below. We'd love to hear from you. If you have ever been a bartender, we'd love to hear from you. I bet they have some amazing stories. Oh, I can I, only imagine. I would love to hear some bartending One stories. One of the things they say in the story that we didn't get to, everyone should bartend a few nights in their life. You know what? I've done it uh, at our church. It's the most nerve-wracking It is three of, hours yeah. of my life. You want a what? <laughs> yeah. A gray mule? Yeah. <laughs> Like no, we Here's do a beer. We do rum and coke. <laughs> <laughs> we do vodka, grapefruit, yeah, yeah, uh, and wine, yeah. and beer, and that's it. Yeah, sorry. All right, cheers. I'm Luke Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. We'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart. Bye.